In this video, we will practice evaluating definite integrals using inverse trig rules. But first, let me remind you how to tell that you will probably need an inverse trig rule. It's all about the degree of the numerator compared to the degree of the denominator. In this case, the numerator has degree 0, no variables, while the denominator has degree 2, that's the highest exponent. If the denominator degree beats the numerator by two or more, that's your clue that you will probably need an inverse trig function. Um, by contrast, what if instead of a one, this was an x? In that case, we wouldn't be doing inverse trig, we would just do u substitution, and it might wind up being a natural log rule or something like that. But, in this case, inverse trig. Here are the three formulas that you need to memorize. Which one do you think we will use for this problem? Hmm, I see that we have the square root, which means it's not going to be the arctangent formula. I see that we have a constant minus the variable. And here in the arc sign rule, we have the constant minus the variable. So it's probably going to be this one. In fact, this is such a perfect match that we won't even need u substitution. We just need to realize that a is 2 because the a value will be the square root of this constant. Let us proceed with the integration. The rule says we do arc sine u over a. So we will write arc sine but we didn't actually do u substitution, so we will just do x over a, in this case, x over 2. Instead of the usual plus c, we will apply the limits of integration like so. This tells us we need to find the value at radical 2 minus the value at 0. So now we have this. In order to evaluate an inverse trig function, you ask yourself a question like sine of what angle is equal to radical 2 over 2? We know that the sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2, so that's the value of the first term. For the second term, we ask ourselves the sine of what angle is equal to 0? There are two answers to this question and that would be either 0 itself or pi. The sine of 0 is 0, and the sine of pi is also 0. However, we need to keep in mind the restrictions on inverse trig functions. In this case, arc sine is only defined from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. That includes 0, but it does not include pi. So, zero is the only answer. Pi over four minus zero is pi over four, so that is the final answer. Which rule do you think we will use for problem number 26? I see that we have the variable minus a constant. So let's see, variable minus the constant, it's probably going to be arc secant. To make our integral match the rule more perfectly, I need to take this exponent and put it outside of parentheses. That way we have something squared. We have u squared. In fact, let's go ahead and write this down. Clearly u is 4x, which means that u prime will be 4. What about a? a is always the square root of this constant, so a will be radical 5. By the way, notice that I intentionally removed the limits of integration. That's important because I am doing u substitution, and these are x values, and here I am replacing my x's with u. So you cannot leave x value limits of integration once you put in a u. If you do leave them, you will lose a point, so don't do that. 
we can bring them back at the end once we put the axes back in. There is a way to change the limits uh, and replace them with values of u, but uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. I'm just going to do it this way. So anyway, it's time to replace dx with du over u prime, which is 4. Hmm, I'm worried just for a second because uh, I still have this x here and uh, there, there's nothing canceling out the x. So what do I do? Well, I simply remember that I have this expression right here relating u and x. Right now, u is by itself. But what if I divided both sides by 4? That would get x by itself. Oh, that's too big. If I divide by 4, I will have x is equal to u over 4. And actually, I would prefer to write this as x is equal to 1 fourth u. So I can make this substitution right here. So instead of x, I can put 1 fourth u. Now, I see that we have a 4 in the denominator, and then we have a 1 fourth in the denominator. When we multiply these straight across, 1 fourth and 4 will cancel each other out. 1 fourth times 4 is 1. This now matches the rule perfectly, so we can go ahead and use it to integrate. I see 1 over a in the front, so I will put 1 over radical 5. And then arc secant, absolute value, And inside the absolute value is u over a. So that will be u over radical 5 plus c for now. u is 4x, so I'm going to go ahead and make that substitution. Now that I have x back in the mix, I can get rid of this c and bring back my limits of integration. I'm going to put a vertical line, and I will write 1 to 4. Those were my limits of integration. This tells me I need to find the value at 4 minus the value at 1. Here is the value at 4 minus the value at 1. There is not much I can do with this. These are not values that we know. So this is as far as we can go without a calculator. So let's call it the final answer. Which rule do you think we will use for problem number 30? I don't see any square root in the denominator, and I see a plus sign. So all signs point to the arctangent rule. Since sine is being squared, then sine must be the value of u. So let's let u equal sine x which means that u prime will equal cosine x. Let's take away the limits of integration and do the u substitution. So I have 1 plus u squared. Instead of dx, I will write du over u prime, which is cosine x. Notice that we have a cosine x in the numerator and the denominator. These will cancel each other out, and now I will have 1 over 1 plus u squared du. This integral now matches the rule perfectly with an a value of 1 because the a value is always the square root of this constant. So we can go ahead and integrate using the rule. In the front, I see 1 over a, but that's just 1 over 1, so I write nothing, and then I will write arc tangent arc tangent of u over a which in this case will just be arc tangent of u and normally i would write plus c but uh, let's hold off on that for a second u is sine x 
So let's go ahead and uh, erase the U and put in the sine X. And instead of writing plus C, let's bring back the limits of integration now. So we will say from 0 to pi over 2. This tells us that we need to find the value at pi over 2 minus the value at 0. So here we go. Arc tangent of sine pi over 2. So this is the value at pi over 2 minus, and now we will do the value at 0. Arc tangent of sine 0. What is the sine of pi over 2? That's at the very top of the unit circle where the y value is 1. So that gives us arc tangent of 1. What is the sine of 0? Zero? 0. To evaluate these inverse trig functions, we need to ask ourselves the question tangent of what angle is equal to 1? And the tangent of what angle is equal to 0? We know that the tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. So that's going to be the value here, pi over 4. We know that the tangent of 0 is 0. So that's going to be the value here. So this is the final answer for number 30. Number 34 is special. We know that we need to use inverse trig rules because the degree of the denominator is 2 away from the numerator. It's two more than the numerator. However, this doesn't look anything like the trig rules. So we need to complete the square to transform this trinomial into a, a form that more closely matches one of the inverse trig rules. So let's do that extra step off to the side. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 13. I am going to leave a space here because this is how you complete the square. We need a special number here. It can't just be any old number. And you know what? 13 is not it. So I need to bump 13 out of the way. No disrespect, 13, but you ain't it. What number do we need right here? Listen to this phrase very carefully. We will do half the middle squared. That's how you complete the square, half the middle squared. So uh, I'm looking at this 4. That's the middle. Half the middle, all right? That means I'm dividing by 2. And then I'm going to square that. And whatever that result is, that's what I'm going to put in this blank spot. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to put a 4 right here. I have just changed the value of the expression. That is not legal. So I need to balance that out with a minus 4 immediately. So I've completed the square, but um, I still haven't changed the format yet. The point of completing the square is that if you now factor the resulting trinomial, you will always get the same binomial twice. x squared is x times x. 4 is 2 times 2, so I have x plus 2 times x plus 2. Let's go ahead and write this as x plus 2 squared instead. So this trinomial is the same as x plus 2 squared. And uh, 13 minus 4 is 9, so I'm just going to bring down plus 9. This expression has the same value as this trinomial. Um, I can tell which trig function I'm going to use. Only one of these rules has no square root in it. And only one of these rules has a plus in it, like this has a plus. You can tell that I'm talking about the arctangent rule. This is the one we are going to use. 
However, they do have the constant first and then plus the variable. So I'm just going to switch these around the other way. No biggie. I have taken off the limits of integration because I'm about to do u substitution. Make sure you do the same. Notice how well our integral matches the inverse trig rule. u is clear, clearly x plus 2, which means that u prime would just equal 1. So that changes nothing. The a value is 3, because the a value will be the square root of the constant. Substituting x plus 2 for u, we have this. Instead of dx, I will write du over u prime, but u prime is 1, so I don't really need to write that. So this is it. Let's go ahead and use the rule to integrate. So I need to do 1 over a in the front. a is 3, so I have 1 over 3. Arctangent. And then I have u over a. But u is x plus 2, so I'm going to go ahead and just write x plus 2. So x plus 2 over 3. Instead of putting the plus c, I am going to apply the limits of integration that I temporarily took away. So we are integrating from negative 2 to positive 2. This means I need to find the value at positive 2 and subtract the value at negative 2. So here is the value at positive 2. Arc tangent positive 2 plus 2 divided by 3. And I need to subtract the value at negative 2, which is 1 third arc tangent negative 2 plus 2 over 3. So that gives me 1 third arc tangent 4 over 3 minus 1 third arc tangent 0. To evaluate an inverse trig function, you ask yourself questions like the tangent of what angle equals 4 over 3? And in, for the second term, the tangent of what angle equals 0? One of these I can answer, and one of them I can't, at least not without a calculator. The one on the right, we know the answer to. The tangent of 0 radians is equal to 0. So this entire term will have a value of 0. So basically it's gone. But this one, we don't know this. Tangent of what angle is 4 over 3? I don't know. I don't know. Without a calculator, it can't do it. So that means we're just going to have to leave the first one the way it is. And the second one is 0. So this is the final answer.